Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, welcome. My name is Madison and I'm the creator of this faithful home. As you can see behind me, we are currently in our guest room with copious amounts of laundry. We will get to that first, but I wanted to take you guys along because I thought it'd be fun to rearrange this room a little bit, kind of switch the bedding over. I have a couple ideas of how we are going to make it work, but yeah, I'm going to take you along with me and we'll kind of see what happens. I have a DIY project that hopefully in a couple days, the weather will be a little bit nicer that I can do. And it's going to go on this wall here as like a feature thing. I'm going to move these pictures over to that wall, move the bed and I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I did want to take you with me. And first we need to tackle this laundry because it's bad. There's like five loads of laundry there. No big deal. It's fine. It's fine. Insert time lapse now. Wow. I decided if I need to get something done, I'm just going to film a video about it because look at that. I did it. I'm exhausted and I still gotta put it all away, but I actually did it. It's been sitting on bed for like four days now, but I decided to make this video, so therefore I had to get it all done. So my next step is going to be taking out everything that's under the bed because we actually use this as a storage because we don't have a lot of storage in this house. So there's a lot of stuff under this bed that I need to move out of the room for a little bit so that we can rearrange everything and then we can start to make this a new room. All right guys. This is everything that we were able to fit under the bed, plus extra room underneath that we have not utilized yet. So if you're looking for something that you need and a little bit of extra storage, get a raised bed. I'll link the one we got from Amazon down below in the description box. It was beautiful, it was like a hundred bucks and it's amazing storage. Alright guys, so I'm pretty happy with how it looks so far. It makes the room feel more open. Not gonna lie though, my husband suggested that we do this months ago. And for whatever reason, when I rearranged it a month ago, or months ago, it felt crowded. So I told him it was a bad idea. But like, I really like this. So I shall admit defeat. My husband was right. This does look a whole lot better. The room's more open. Like where the tripod's set up right now, I have a ton more space. It's gonna give me a lot more space like to make more videos in here and really utilize this area. So I get off my high horse and say that my husband was right. Listen to your husbands, guys. So we have the guest bed rearranged in this room. The next thing that I want to do is make a focal wall behind me. 
So I went to Lowe's and I picked up two pieces of plywood that measure two foot by four foot. I'm gonna drill a ton of holes in them and make it into a modern pegboard and put it up on the wall here. Add some shelves, plants, and that kind of stuff and decorate. But the first step that we need to do is map out the holes. All right guys, so first step in planning out the grid, the board, like I said, is 24 by 48. So I decided that I'm going to do four inches in between each hole. Now this is gonna include the hole size itself. And so I'm using a one inch bit that you'll see later on once we get to drilling it. Nonetheless, since I'm gonna do four inches in between to the center point, it'll give it roughly about three inches in between holes when it's all said and done. And so I thought that would be a good distance. Plus it will work out evenly to where I have five running across the length and 11 running across the height. So I have my sewing ruler here and a pencil. And here is where I drew up like what I was gonna do. But nonetheless, I'm going to take this, probably need a tape measure as well at some point. And I'm just gonna start drawing lines down the board every four inches, starting at this being zero, going all the way down. And then I have one of these wood pieces that I will be using to hang the boards later to do the straight edge for the uh, height of the board because obviously this isn't long enough. What I really wanna pay attention to is making sure that my grid line is very, very straight 90 degrees because when you look out on the wall, you don't want the holes to start like trickling downwards, right? You want it to be all nice and uniform. So I'm gonna make sure that I take a good amount of time to get this set up that way it sets me up for success later. I can draw with a pencil the lines all the way across because when we go to drill the holes when we're done, I will be sanding the entire board so it'll sand off any extra pencil line. I won't press down too hard when I'm doing it, but I will do it enough to where you can see the grid line. I can clearly mark out the center point for each spot and know exactly where I'm gonna drill. So I'm gonna take this, do a time lapse for you because it is going to take me a while and we will get this grid line done. Right, guys we've moved outside I have my drill and my one inch paddle bit the board is set up it's actually propped up on a couple two by four scraps that way when I drill it can go all the way through and now that I have this beautiful grid laid out I'm just gonna go ahead find each of the dots and drill the holes a few things to keep in mind while you're drilling all these holes is first, make sure that you drill the first hole all the way through and get your dowel in check to make sure it fits. That's key before you drill all the holes. But then after that, you only want to drill halfway through like you see me doing here. And then once you get all of them drilled on the front side, flip the board over and then start drilling the other halfway through on the back. That'll help give you a cleaner hole in the end and it won't chip any of the wood. And also doing on the ground helped me to get more of my body weight into the drill because the wood was so thick to drill through. All right guys, so the project is turning out great so far. All of the holes are drilled. Look how great it is looking. I'm so excited. The next step is going to be taking my belt sander and sanding across the entire top. guys what's up outfit change i'm back for another day of projects as you can see behind me we have both panels done now i didn't want to bore you with taking you through the whole process again of doing that panel that 
I can point in a mirror. It's fine. Uh, that panel I just finished outside right now, so I am probably covered in sawdust. I tried to get most of it off, but I'm going to go back into the shop anyways. But guys, look how awesome they look. I'm super excited. The next step that we need to do is make the shelves. I have the dowels that we need to cut for all of the pegs. And then we're gonna hang these bad boys on the wall right there and decorate them. So we're gonna go back out to the shop and I'm gonna show you how I'm going to cut the dowels and the shelves and also the brackets for the back of it. Also, look, there's me. All right guys, so it's really pretty out here. So I figured I would move my tools out to the pad instead of in the shop or out onto the front porch because this is as far as I wanted to drag it. But I'm going to cut these boards down and I'll do like a voiceover to let you know kind of what I'm doing. That way you don't hear the obnoxious every time. The first thing I'm doing here is cutting all of the dowels at four and a half inches long. This will be a perfect length to hold the shelves and also give enough room to go into the pegboard securely. All right, so I have all of my pegs cut. I ended up cutting 11 of them and there was a little bit of scrap piece that was kind of weird at the end anyway, so I didn't want it. Now we have 11 pegs. I'm going to cut the shelves next. I decided to cut the boards in various sizes, so I cut two at 10 inches long, two at 16 inches long, and then one board at 20 inches long. That way I have varying sizes on the pegboard wall. All right guys, shelves are cut. The last thing I need to do is cut the bracers for the back. For this project, I will need six bracers, three per board, and you want them to be just a little bit shorter than the width of each of the boards, so I'm cutting them each at 20 inches long. Another thing that is important to add a nice little touch is to make sure you go back and sand the edges of your pegs as well as your shelves just to give them a nice cleaned up edge. The miter saw does a really good job at making a nice clean cut, but you never know. All right, guys, so the next thing that we need to do is use our bracer pieces that we cut outside to hang these on the wall. Now, because these are so heavy, we really need to make sure that we are drilling into a stud and not just the drywall. So what I have planned is I'm going to take a board. Hear me out on this. I'm going to attach one of the pieces to the back. I'm going to drill this piece into the board and then take this piece, drill it, find the studs accordingly against the wall, drill it at the height I want, and then that way this can sit on top of it and rest up on the wall. That way I can drill it into place. And I will also be drilling one piece at the top, one piece at the bottom, having this as a hook so it can sit on and then I will be drilling straight into the board into the braces that we put on the wall. So let's go ahead and do that now. Moment of truth, guys. Let's see if this hangs up, and then we'll do the other one. Ooh, guys! I'm so excited! Okay. I'll do the other one first, and then put them both up at the same time. Ooh. Also, this one goes on that side, because I already decided I like that one here, so. Give me a minute. I think someone's at my house. It's fine guys. It's one of our buddies that's uh, grinding down a tree stem. We're, 
We're good. We, we can get back. It looks so good. Okay. So what I have to do next is the bracer pieces, like right here. I'm going to do a couple screws to secure them here. That way it sets. But... We'll, we'll do that first and then we'll get more excited. Okay, this is gonna, let me see if I can get this to work. Oh, I can, cause I can totally, <gasps> guys. Okay, follow me on this. I'm gonna secure the top by drilling from here into here so you don't see the screw hole. <laughs> Genius. But that means I gotta drill a pilot hole first. And a longer screw. Dang it. Ooh. Found another box of screws that are longer. <laughs> Win. If I could open them. Ow. They have never been opened. That's why I can't. Oh, my husband's gonna hate me for opening it like this. Oh well. This is real life. It wouldn't be a DIY project if you didn't accidentally scuff the wall a little bit. Don't tell my husband. You don't see anything. You don't. It's fine. I just need a little bit of paint. That's my luck though. Moving on, we can put our pegs in the board and we have our shelves of various sizes. Not gonna lie, I already played around with it before hitting record and hanging all this up so I know where they're gonna go so it won't take me long. Guys, it looks so good! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to decorate this. I'm so happy for how this project turned out. I absolutely love how everything looks in this guest room. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help out my channel. And if you are new to my channel, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button so that you feel welcomed into this faithful home with me. Remember, I make videos every Wednesday and Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time, and I will see you next time in another video. Bye, guys!